here because Scott doesn't love you anymore. And to be honest, I don't know that he ever really did. How's it going? I'm not Scott. Tonight is a very special HQ event. First of all, I am here. What up? I'm Neil Patrick Harris, NPH. Said I would not set foot on this show if we did not make it special. We're making quistery, baby. Ooh, I am Little Nugget. I am Quick Foot. I am Catch Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about Kevin. And you tried Jimmy. And Neil. We were able to book him. I don't know. Listen. Look, I appreciate the call. I'm very flattered, uh, but I'm afraid I'm busy tonight. Yeah, we've got our own festivities happening over here. Maybe next year, okay? All right, thanks. The Oscars. Oh, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, and welcome to the only live show with a host tonight. HQ Trivia on Oscar Sunday, baby. You've all been nominated for Best HQD. But there can only be one winner on tonight's winner take all edition of Tyler Perry's HQ, the live mobile game show where you answer questions to win cash. Yes, we're finding the one. In a world replete with failures, shutdowns, cancellations, and people who don't show up on time, if at all, you can always count on the Quiz Daddy, aka Bradley H. Cooper, aka George H. Cuny, aka Christopher Walken, aka Steven Spielberg, aka me. Scott Rogowski, live from Winseltown with all you beautiful, h cutiful people, including Meg Norris, Pierce McCarthy, Sandra Temple, Lacey and her boyfriend Stu, Anna and her boyfriend Cameron, Alyssa and her mom Andrea, the Kremer Frank family playing together, and the Zuckermans from Harrisburg, now spread throughout the Northeast. Hi, all of you. Tonight, we depart from our normal itinerary. I'm not going to stop asking questions until there is one person left standing who will be bringing home all the uncured, low-sodium, preservative-free turkey bacon. That's right, the entire $10,000 prize. That is mucho moolah. Enough to finance your own indie film, perhaps? Look, David Lynch did it with a racer head. And speaking of, are you playing with other HQDs nearby? Yeah, if you are, you can earn an eraser. That's right, it erases a wrong answer, gives you a 50-50 chance. Do you have an extra life on hand for tonight? That's gonna come in handy. It's on hand, it's handy. It can be used through Q14 tonight, once per game, along with those erasers. If you don't have an extra life, you can get one right now. Or you can refer your friends, play five days in a row, but there's not enough time for that. We're playing right now. Of course, we are in the home stretch of season two. You earn points for each question you get right. And those points help you level up for free passes, which are basically like extra lives that last the entire season long. They also contribute to the season finale jackpot, which has been jacked up all the way north of 100K. Let's look at it right now. We're at $113,069. Woo, doggy. And you'll notice that, that date there, March 3rd. Yeah, big news. The season finale is no longer happening on Thursday, February 28th. That's right. We're giving that prize three additional days to grow and giving you a few more big chances to level up with a week-long season-ending celebration. All games this week will have point multipliers Starting with tonight, we're giving you a record-breaking, quistery-making, 20 times multiplier? Have we lost our minds? No, we just love you that much. So be here next Sunday, March 3rd, for the major season finale event over a 100 grand. You saw that 113,000 already. That's just going to keep going up, up, up. You never know what could happen when we're alive. A lot of fun themes this week. Tomorrow, Movie Monday. It's all about Marvel, going into the Spider-Verse and beyond. Marvel Movie Trivia Night tomorrow at 9. Wednesday, we're doing Beyonce Trivia Night. And Thursday, Lord of the Rings. So much fun this week. But we got tonight to handle first. Tonight's game concerns Oscar nominees and winners across the broad spectrum of cinema. Remember, one winner takes all, $10,000. Forget about the book. It's all about the green. Will you be the favorite? Will your star be born? I hope you spent the day at CeCe's Pizza Buffet carbo-loading for what could be a marathon. Will this broadcast outlast the Oscars? We're about to find out, folks. So without further ado, let us get down to the nitty-gritty with over 550,000, over a half a million of you live in this game right now around the world. I see you, Australia. Let's get this Oscar show on the road. Winner take all. Cumero, numero uno. I'll be back is an iconic quote from what action movie? Bohemian Rhapsody, The Terminator, or Roma? If we use the quote, hasta la vista, I mean, 
maybe you'd hesitate and click Roma, but come on, I'll be back. It can't be anyone other than Arnold as the Terminator. And he did come back for three more Terminator movies with another on the way, folks. 488,078, got this right. The rest of you, get out. Come with me if you want to live to Q2. One of the biggest sleeper hits of all time is my big fat Greek what? Doink, car, or wedding. How many times I gotta tell you? Big old doinks are Amish, not Greek. Nia Vardalos is Greek, and her one-woman stage show was turned into one of the highest grossing rom-coms of all time, my big fat Greek wedding, of course. We're going to the chapel, gonna get married. 483,365 are coming with me to Q3 doink. <laughs> 3,000 thought it was doink. Q3, folks, what part of the U.S. is most associated with this accent? Midwest, oh, oh, oh. So where are you girls from? Chaska, Lesueur, but I went to high school in White Bear Lake. Go Bears. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that, that accent, that accent. Did you hear it? Midwestern, Brooklyn, or Southern? What do you think? What do you think? What is it, what is it? Ah, Francis McDormand as Marge Gunderson. Yeah, she's trying to solve a crime there in Fargo. Fargo, North Dakota, don't you know? Which is Midwest, US, Midwestern. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 381,574 of you are a smooth smoothie, you know. The rest of you are going in the wood chipper. Unless you got a free level or a extra life. Q4, in which film did Al Pacino repeatedly shout, hoo Serpico, scent of a woman, or dog day afternoon? Oh, pro tip. Because it reminds him of his best actor winning turn as an irritable, blind, retired army officer in Scent of a Woman. Hoo-ha! 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 That last defeated hoo-ha is my favorite. Scent of a Woman is your answer. 297,336. Picking up the scent of a winner, perhaps? It's gonna be one of you, just one of you tonight. Q5, we got a long way to go. Which of these movies was the film debut of Dolly Parton? Well, hello, and Dolly. Well, hello. She was already well established as a successful singer songwriter when she tested the acting waters as Dora Lee Rhodes in this 1980 comedy, and that star power helped nine to five gross over $100 million. Woo, doggy. 317,458. Quizzing nine to five, what a way to make a living. You'll be making 10,000, one of you. Q6, the director of Do the Right Thing also directed what Clive Owen movie? Closer, Inside Man, or Children of Men? What do we think here? Do the Right Thing, Mo Betta Blues, Crooklyn, he got game, all Spike Lee joints, like Black Klansman, nominated for Best Picture this year. Spike's films always have a lot going on in this nifty little heist movie. Inside Man is no exception. You dig? 209,368. Got this one right, but ooh, over 200,000 got it wrong and lost half of you there. I really hope you have that extra life to keep you in. We are moving on by any means necessary to Q7. In The Fugitive, starring Harrison Ford, what is the famous response to, I didn't kill my wife? Oh, come on. Yes, you did, or I don't care. What is it? What is it? It wasn't me, it was the one-armed man. After a stunning chase, one of many, Mr. Callista Flockhart, as Dr. Richard Kimball, tries to plead with Tommy Lee Jones, but U.S. Marshal Sam Gerard ain't having it. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. I don't care. Bonus fact, that line was improvised. Yeah, 252,946. Well, you care about winning tonight. You're escaping to Q8. Question eight. We are, I would say we're past the halfway. I don't know what the halfway point is. Could be question 15 tonight. Which of these talented child actors was not nominated for an Oscar for their breakout role? Haley Joel Osment, Jacob Tremblay, or Saoirse Ronan? What do we think here, folks? Oh, an award ceremony is no place for a child, unless they're nominated for an award, of course, as Haley Joel Osment was for The Sixth Sense, and Cersei for Atonement. But Lil Jacob Tremblay was snubbed in 2016, while his co-star in Room Brie Larson won Best Actress. 
105,361. Breaking out at this question here could be room for you at Q9. Well, there is. There is room. The mother in The Iron Giant was voiced by a lead actress on which TV show? Friends, Grey's Anatomy, or Sex in the City? You already know Vin Diesel voiced the gentle giant in this beloved animated film because I asked that on a previous quiz. But did you know America's sweetheart, Jennifer Aniston, voiced the mommy? Guess what I found? Hogarth, we've been through this before. No pets. You know Jen from David Wayne's Wanderlust. Oh, I guess also Rachel on Friends. 64,467. We're down to five digits now. You are human doodles. And you're getting Q10. The last action hero had the bad luck of opening the week after what film? Jurassic Park, Rocky II, or Titanic? Ah, oh, this movie. I saw this one. I think I saw it in theaters. It should have been a hit. Had the director of Predator and Die Hard starred Arnold in his prime, making 15 million a picture and featured Art Carney in his last film role, but when you open after dinosaurs, you better hold on to your butts. Jurassic Park took a big bite out of Last Action's box office, 43,965, taking a bite out of Q11. We are winnowing it down today, folks. Chipping away at all of you. We start with a half a million, now under 50,000 at Q11. Which of these is a bridesmaid dress style Katherine Heigl wears in 27 dresses? Flapper, clown, or guy? Look, we're not maniacs. I'm not going to ask you to name all 27 dresses, okay? But this was a rather memorable one. Poor Katie. Had to wear so much tool in this movie, but she also got to rock some badass Luke's. Yeah, that would be uh, dress number 27. Or goth. The goth dress at the wedding of the receptionist, remember? Come on, 25,470 saying yes to the dress and yes to Q12. We're down to 25,470. Remember, those extra lives can kick in all the way to Q14 tonight, okay? So you got a few more questions to use them. Q12, what line ends this speech by Robin Williams? I ask you about love, probably quote me a sonnet. But you've never looked at a woman and been totally vulnerable. Is it your move, Chief? Think about it. Or how about them apples? And this is why you should be playing with sound on, folks. Come on, you gotta hear it. You gotta hear what's happening. Sound on! Will Hunting has been giving Robin, Dr. McGuire, nothing but sass left and right, and it bothers the good doctor until he realizes it doesn't matter. Will is just a kid who doesn't want to open up and talk about himself. So McGuire puts the ball in Will's court. Your move, Chief. Oh, this is it, Chief. Your move, Chief. How about them apples? That's a totally, totally different scene. But how about these apples? 15,970 got a red delicious, juicy. And you're getting Q13. Taraji P. Henson earned an Oscar nomination for a film with the same director as what? Django Unchained, Zodiac, or Goodfellas? Remember this movie? Taraji may have been thoroughly insulted by her salary for this age reverse weepy, but her performance in Benjamin Button earned her a well-deserved supporting actor nomination. Shockingly, Benjamin Button, directed by David Fincher, who also helmed Zodiac. Uh-huh. Zodiac at Q13, 9,039 are left after that one. The rest of you killed by the Zodiac killer. We're down to four figures now. 9,039 of you got this quiz buttoned up as we head to Q14. Which of these past Oscar nominees has not played a Keanu Reeves love interest? Charlize Theron, Margot Robbie, or Diane Keaton? Charlize, Margot, or Diane? Diane! Charlize and Reeves had red hot chemistry twice in The Devil's Advocate and Sweet November, and he allegedly had an IRL love affair with Diane Keaton after their on film fling in Something's Gotta Give, but Keanu has yet to dip his John Wick in Margot Robbie, in, in a movie at least. 7,888 got Margot Robbie, and that means you're getting Q15. That, that was it, your last chance to use the extra life. It's all over now, folks, no safety net. It's just on you. 
You and that $10,000 going to one of you, Q15. Ryan Gosling stars in The Nice Guys, opposite the actor who played which part in 2012's Les Miserables? Monsieur Denardier, Jean Valjean, or Javert? Denardier. Ah, ouais, uh -huh. These nice guys finished first. I haven't seen the movie, but critics and moviegoers dug the Shane Black picture starring Ryan Gosling and Oscar winner Russell Crowe, who memorably warbled his way through Les Mis as Javert. Uh-huh. Javert's your answer, 5,434. Bon boulot. You are stars in your multitudes. Keep in watch at Q16 tonight. Which actor turned down the role of Shrek because he didn't want to play an ogre? Nicolas Cage, Danny DeVito, or Willem Dafoe? Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Spoiler, one of these fellas will be co-hosting HQ with me next month. Hmm? But, but is he the answer? All three actors have experience playing monsters of different stripes, but Nick Cage could have been the big green guy and another 50 million richer, perhaps. 3,661, ogre-whelmed with joy. You're out of the swamp. By the way, the 1,189 who picked Danny DeVito, well, if you're a Danny DeVito fan, tune into HQ in March, or every night, but especially, there's a, there's a special show coming up. Q17, during this famous scene, who speaks Spanish? Everybody, raise your glass to the couple of the decade, Doug and Lillian. Woo! Uh, did, did, you, did you hear that? Did you see that? Did you have time to answer it? Maya Rudolph, Rose Byrne, or Kristen Wiig? Well, speaking Spanish is a bit of an overstatement, but, you know, she kind of strings together a few words. Take a look at the answer here. And to everyone here, gracias para vivir en la casa, en las escuelas. Dienes con beber en las fortuaza. Kristen Wig is your answer at Q17, and we lost a whole lot of you there. Uh, is it because we we didn't give people time to what 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 are we gonna do here? Well, we've got we've got to go on. The show must go on. Uh, I'm not going to call it a full savage question because it's not truly fair, I don't think, but the 547 of you, keep smiling, keep shining. You're in this thing at Q18. Samuel L. Jackson famously swore in his reaction shot after losing an Oscar to whom? Colin Firth, Ralph Fiennes, or Martin Lando? Samuel L. Jackson doesn't have an Oscar? What? How? Not even for snakes on a plane? Sam himself is clearly annoyed by this fact when he didn't win for Pulp Fiction in 95. See if you can read his lips as the winner. And the Oscar goes to... Martin Landau and Ed Wood. Martin Landau playing Bella Lugosi in Ed Wood and we're down to 232 after Q18. 232 after half a million started this baby. I, I mean, thinks we're getting close to the one here. We only have so many questions prepped. Q19, let's get into it. The star of A Simple Favor was nominated for an Oscar playing opposite what big time actor? Harrison Ford, George Clooney, or Ben Affleck? Now this, this was a Darcy Bell novel adapted into a Paul Feig directed box office hit last year starring Blake Lively and a Kendrick. Kendrick previously earned an Oscar nomination for 2009's Up in the Air, the George Clooney. Airborne drama Jason Reitman directed and we're down to 92 double digits. We're under 100, 92. You're the 92 smartest HQDs in this game tonight. It's impressive. But remember, we're looking for just one of you. One of you is taking it all home. And we are at Q20. Ooh, getting exciting. Which Oscar winning actor botched the pronunciation of this movie's title at an award show? That's the movie. Was it Jean Dujardin, Leonardo DiCaprio, or John Travolta? Judy Dench, Steve Coogan, name a more iconic duo, huh? Maybe this guy was nervous, or maybe he was simply such a huge fan of the film that he was suffering from Philomania. Well, that's how Leonardo DiCaprio pronounced the phenomenal Philomena at the 71st Golden Globes, and we're down to 24. Play it, Leo! <laughs> hoo -ah! 24 of you, Ken Griffey Jr. Q21, Blackjack, baby. 
The actor who plays Colin Powell in Vice has previously been nominated for what award? Golden Globe, Oscar, or neither? Or neither. Neither. Or neither. However you pronounce it. I like neither. I think that's fun. Colin. That's how you pronounce his name. Colin? No. Colin. Can someone put some respect on Tyler Perry's name, please? The man is out there writing, producing, directing, and acting up a storm, and no awards to show for it? No love. Neither. Neither. For Tyler Perry as Colin Powell in Vice, 17 are left after that one. I think he's just got to make his own reality, you know? Tyler Perry's Medea wins an Oscar. That could be coming next. But right now, Q22 is coming next for the 17 of you left in this game. You got just about 100,000 people watching this thing. This is exciting. This is more exciting than the Oscars, right? Way more exciting. Q22. Which of these Oscar winners did not lend their voice to the animated hit Sing? Reese Witherspoon, Matthew McConaughey, or Nicole Kidman? Did you see Sing? Sing Sing? The answer is no stranger to musicals, but after appearing in Moulin Rouge and Nine, remember that? Australia's own Nicole Kidman did not grace Illumination's 2016 offering with her presence, and we're down to 14! 14 HQDs! Ah! <sighs> Forget six pence, we're singing about $10,000 tonight. And by the way, if, if, if you haven't had enough of HQ, there's HQ words coming up next at 9.30. If, if this ends before 9.30, that is, we could be going, we could be going long tonight. We're at Q23. I can't remember being at Q23 on HQ. $10,000, 14 players left. The star of which film went to an Olympic trial semifinal for archery, a league of their own, Blade Runner, or Working Girl? not exactly what you think, okay? This actor wasn't a childhood archer who pursued, Olymp pursued Olympic glory before catching the acting bug. No, Gina Davis took up the bow at age 41 and competed in the Sydney trials in 99. Seven years earlier, she was suiting up and swinging a bat in a league of their own, and now there are just 13 of you left. Nobody bit on Blade Runner. 13 of you knew Gina Davis was an archer. Hats off to you. You're in a league of your own, but... The league is still too big. We need to get just one of you left. We're down to an unlucky 13. Uh-oh. Q24. Glenn Close has not played which of these characters in film? Robot creator, Mother Bird, or Meek Pirate? And I should say, if, if this question is so unlucky for the 13 of you that nobody get it right, we're going to keep you in the game, okay? We're not rolling this over to another week. There's going to be one winner tonight, whether you like it or not. Well, one of you is going to like it. I'm going to like it. And you're going to like it. Glenn has had a long, hopefully soon to be awarded with an Oscar career, where she played a pirate in Hook, a robot creator in Stepper Wise, but she's never played a bird, animated or otherwise, or mother, and we're down to five! Five alive at Q24! Shout out my man Noma! Noma Garcia Power, number five. I wore number five. But we got Q25 right now for the five of you left. $10,000 going to one of you. This could be it, folks! It could all boil down to this final question as the clock ticks away to 9.30. Words coming up. Q25. Who played the princess in the Disney film that featured a theme song by Lana Del Rey? Elle Fanning, Dakota Fanning, or Emma Watson? Lana Del Rey. Oh, her sultry vocals lulled us into being interested in Maleficent, the Angelina Jolie vehicle where Dakota's younger sister, Elle, played Sleeping Beauty. And now we're down to two! The final two! The dynamic duo! Three of you fell for Emma Watson. I, I agree. I get it. But two of you had the right answer there. There, L Fanning at 25. And that means the two of you left in this game are going head to head. For $10,000 at Q26. We now have over 100,000 watching. More of you watching now. This is exciting. Remember, if everyone gets a question wrong here, if both of you get it wrong, we will put both of you back in the game for another question, okay? One of you is winning 10K right here, perhaps right now. Q26. In the film where Benicio Del Toro played a James Bond villain, who played Bond? Timothy Dalton, Daniel Craig, or Pierce Brosnan? <sighs> Bond. Of course it comes down to 007. I hope you didn't confuse Benicio with Javier Bardem in Skyfall. No. Del Toro showed off his incredible brooding acting skills as Dario, Sanchez's henchman, in 1989's License to Kill. And who was playing Bond back then? 
of course, Timmy D, Timothy Dalton, and we got it. We got our one. Our best HQD award goes to you. You're $10,000 richer, baby. <laughs> Go crazy, folks. Well, just the one folk, the one of you, sad blob. I hope you prepare your acceptance speech because you, my friend, are the big winner. Not sad, no more. $10,000 richer is what you are. Wealthy blob, happy blob. I mean, you might you might still be a blob, but you, you got $10,000 to your name. Congratulations, Mazal Tov, Yashikoa. So much more fun than the Oscars, right? Because you don't win money when you watch the Oscars, but you do when you play HQ. Woo, doggy. We got, to, what, 26 questions? Of course, it came down to Bond. Sad Blob likes his quiz. Shaken, not stirred. I'm out of breath. We're almost out of questions, but we got to get out of here because Anna's coming up next with words like right now. So stay tuned for that. Of course, Marvel Monday, tomorrow, Beyonce Wednesday. Lord of the Rings on Thursday. Look at that Marvel trivia night tomorrow night. More movies, baby. More movies coming at you. I'm going to go uh, play words and then watch the Oscars. Until I see you all again, I'm Scott Rogowski signing off saying, Wakanda forever. Come on. Let's win, Black Panther. Let's do this. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.